Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man, your Director of Worship Resources with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I am your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today's question comes to us from Elad Shapira, a United Methodist pastor in Iowa, who wonders why there is this thing in the worship order called special music when it's a thing that it actually tends to appear every single Sunday and therefore one wonders why one calls it special if it's actually a regular part of the worship service. Well, Elad and others, this idea of having special music or special musical performances uh, as part of a worship service represent an important practice from revival services in the 19th century. These revival services, most uh, particularly described and kind of pioneered in a certain way by uh, the revivalist Charles Grandison Finney, um, were designed from beginning to end to be a series of religious exercises aimed from beginning to end toward getting persons present uh, to a heightened state of commitment to God or conversion to Christ in the first place. That meant that what was happening in the leadership of those services was much less about helping everybody there participate actively in offering worship to God, and much more a performance designed to lead to a particular kind of outcome, a, a, per, a commitment to some kind of personal uh, deepening of their walk with Christ, or to a next step in their walk with Christ, um, or to move from a state of non-Christianity toward becoming a Christian. The whole service was aimed toward that one thing, which is different than one Sunday morning services were doing. However, it was becoming increasingly the case by the end of the 19th century that some of these practices that were part of revival services started showing up on Sunday morning. In the revivals, the special music represented particular and very often auditioned performance groups who were coming in to be part of what was sometimes referred to as the preliminaries leading into the preaching, which was the primary means by which people would then um, be uh, persuaded to make a deep or a new commitment to Christ. Um, this special music was brought by groups that were particularly auditioned uh, because of the quality of their performance ability to offer something that would be connected with what was going to be happening in that particular service on that particular night. As this practice and other revival practices sort of migrated into and began influencing what was happening in Sunday morning worship, one of those things began to be this thing called special music, which would represent anything that was being done by people who were not the regular choir of that particular congregation. Was it a necessary part of worship per se? No, still isn't. Indeed, as we understand the nature of what the Lord's Day worship is to be, Lord's Day worship is not fundamentally aimed at evangelism and conversion. Lord's Day worship is fundamentally the worship of the gathered people offering themselves fully to God to see what God is going to do with them. That may include the possibility of transformation. It may include healing. But it's not that it, you're trying to always lead to one particular kind of conclusion as the point of the whole service in the first place. The service is not about changing us first. It's about us offering ourselves to God first and foremost of all. So, do we need to have a thing called special music in our worship services? Probably not. If it's there, it represents that the services of this particular congregation have probably been influenced and still have some lingering influence from the revival practices of the 19th century. But think about um, why you would have a performance that's really aimed at doing something other than what the whole assembly is doing and gathering for worship at the time, and evaluate whether it makes sense to continue that practice. Especially ask yourself, should you even call it special music 
if in fact it's just a regular part of what you're doing in the first place. And then find some other way to describe what it is um, so that it's much clearer the role that it's playing. Hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at umcdiscipleship.org through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or just drop a line on this page and perhaps your question or comment will become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. May the peace of Christ be always with you.